Today we're going to start off by moving the cows into this awesome lush grass that they have here. Um, but really today we're going to just talk about what we're planting for fall. And as we prep for those, uh, talk about why we're planting what we plant and a little bit of more sustainability and prepping as we save seeds from year after year. All right, so we, um, our Hugo culture beds, if you've seen, we've had some tomatoes that were like trees, but they're finally playing out. We had about 30, uh, 36 plants planted in these two Hugo culture beds. And those two Hugo culture beds made, uh, we had a lot of pink ladies. We had some, uh, some yellow golds. Also those little gumdrop ones that I asked y'all which ones, what they are, I don't know. But those, and then we had, uh, of course, some, some Cherokee purple and some um, Jubilees. Now, they're pretty much played out uh, right here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get that stuff out because again, we're prepping for fall. So I don't know what we're gonna go in this bed, but I need it to rest a little bit. And that way we can build its nutrients back up with compost and manure. So we're gonna go and take these out. Um, as you know, I've got several more fall tomatoes over here growing. So um, part of sustainability, like we were talking about, is making sure we go in progression. So we've our, our early spring tomatoes that were in our garden have of course played out and they're all. Now these were our second set. These will be playing out, or actually have played out. The set over here by the chickens, if you see right here, um, they will be our next set. They are they still have a good bit of life left in them. They're starting to put off some big whopper uh, green tomatoes. So now they're they're really starting to put red off. And then we have these over here behind the plum tree that have pretty much just started with the um, pepper. So they're in progression. We're actually going to start another set of tomatoes uh, for fall in the greenhouse for winter. Excuse me. So we'll get started on that. But the main thing is right now, we're gonna go ahead and get all these up. I need to use these tomato sticks on some of the ones in the back here. And uh, and we're gonna go ahead and get all this up because this is pretty much played out. All the things that are left, anything, uh, any fruit that's left on there, is pretty much, it's not growing like it's supposed to. So what we're gonna do is give it to the chickens. They'll break it down. And of course, that'll be compost for the next tomatoes sometime later this year. <laughs> left so what we'll do is go ahead and we'll have those as fried green tomatoes we hate to waste them but we don't want to give those to the chickens we'll eat those finishing this up we've got one bed down we got to get the other one down but what is so cool is sustainability again what we're trying to practice for 2019 um, understanding that tomatoes we planted 36 tomatoes from seed what is so cool is that those beds made hundreds of tomatoes I can't, I can't begin to count how many tomatoes that one Hugo culture two bed right there made so what we will do now are not out of the green ones, but out of the ones we have inside, we'll pull seeds out of probably two tomatoes and it will replace all those tomatoes we just had. So that's what's so cool. Now we're gonna save more than two tomatoes because we're gonna seeds for several other beds. But what's amazing is two tomatoes can provide flowers and plants for these two Hugo culture beds that makes hundreds of tomatoes. So that's what we're trying to get to. If we ever get to the point where we just believe we can always buy seed and plant and that's sustainability and that's cooking for ourselves, and that is good. I, I'm not saying that for anybody who does not save seed, but as a homesteader, we need to get to the point where we're prepping a little bit with homesteading. And what that means is maybe saving seed that's in tomatoes for the next season, for the next season, for the next year, because one day these seeds may not be here. And if we don't have seeds, we can't plant. And if we can't plant, we can't eat. So that's part of sustainability is not only having produce, but saving produce for the next year. 
Well, as you, as you can see, I had to stop filming for a little bit. It started flooding. Um, I mean, came a flood. I got all the uh, tomatoes down and got uh, got them into got the just the junk, basically that was left of the stems, and also what's left in the uh, you know some of the fruit that we're just kind of merely making and not really good for us, just kind of rotted. Got them out, put them in with the pigs and chickens, so they both have pieces of the tomato and they've ate them. But you can see it; it's just it's like a pond in the both places, just because it stormed. Um, it stormed here just a second ago, but the sun's out, so that means we're out. And we're gonna try to get some more work done. But you see, those beds are ready. So what we're gonna do is retop those out with manure, compost, and probably some hay. That way we can get um, get those ready for fall and winter. We're gonna do the same thing with this bed here because the tomatoes are pretty much played out. Now the ones behind it, the one behind it is uh, asparagus. It's doing great. It's the second year of asparagus and they're actually starting to make true asparagus spear. So I'm excited about that. So we'll show you some of that. And then the, again, the, the tomatoes back there are good. The tomatoes over here are good. We're gonna um, kind of stand those up with these extra tomato sticks that we've got. So we're gonna get back started. We just had to kind of cut it off just for a second. I was trying to uh, get the rest of the stuff down while it's flooding, <laughs> but I got it, so I had to put my camera up. But we're gonna knock those out and get those ready, and then I uh, start back. Well, as fast as I went in to get my scissors and some feed uh, for Daddy, and I'll explain why I got feed for him. As fast as I went in, it was like two minutes. That song went away, and it looked like it's been to rain again, it's thundering. So we're gonna go ahead and try to tie up these tomatoes with these new sticks. Um, also, I've got feed for Daddy-O. I've got to go get a measurement of Daddy-O for um, his registration papers as a miniature bull. They want to know how many he is, is he. <laughs> so I've got to get a proper measurement and make sure he is just where he's supposed to be. The bee houses are doing good. I just actually we didn't cut around it right before it stormed, um, but it already looks kind of muddy since... I did that so let's go measure him right quick and then if we can beat the the rain which we of course is not bad to have we're going to try to get those tomatoes uh pinned up and stood up a little bit better they've grown exponentially since we've had this rain i'll show you this over here <laughs> well you see those logs all these logs here that's from that uh wonderful tree that i just cut up once you see the corn stood back up after that severe rain we had in flood that tore the trees down. Um, look how much wood. After we tore the, um, after it tore up through here, all this corn was pretty much laid over. I left it like it was just to see if it stand itself back up, and it did. I'm I'm real pleased with it. So stood it back, it stood itself back up. Again, it's sweet corn, so it's not gonna get too tall. But um, so far it's doing okay. I wish it'd get a little taller than it was. It's starting, already starting to throw off uh, tassels at the top, which I didn't really want. And it's too hot. You see it's kind of turning yellow. But I'm hoping that this, these few little rains will, will make it come on out and put some corn out. Look, evidence of a deer. That top ate off like that. Well, if my garden produces venison, I'm just, as, I'm just okay. I'm just okay with it too. Well, let's get uh, let's get Daddy O measured, and then we will go ahead and try to beat this rain and get the tomatoes all tied back up. And then from there, I think we're going to try to do a little bit more with the raised gardens as we get ready. We're going to try to plant another fall uh, potato harvest, and then also we're going to try to plant a few more, um, a few more peas. In the main garden and then we're gonna get ready for brassicas and uh we're gonna try to do some soil blocks for them inside so we're not gonna get to all that today but we'll get as far as we can but let's go ahead and get him measured right quick as you can see i'm tying up these tomatoes look at all the tomatoes on these it's great 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 harvest here that's going to be happening over the next few weeks these are starting to turn yellow beautiful 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 look at them all huge look at these peppers they're looking great 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 jalapenos those are uh red chili peppers over there they're still green they haven't turned red yet look how beautiful these tomatoes are though absolutely gorgeous we're in progression so these are our ones look how nice these look you know we took the hugo culture down these are our second excuse me last middle and the ones right we planted right after Hugo culture. So these will be next to harvest. 
then these will be next, which I gotta stand these up. And those are the last ones until we start our new ones over in the actual uh, greenhouse. So uh, for winter. So doing really good. We're gonna get these stood up. I just wanna show you how pretty all these tomatoes are. Absolutely gorgeous. Big old tomatoes. Size your hand there. Beautiful. Rain. Well, we're trying to beat the rain. What are we doing over here, mommy? Some much needed weeding. All right. Okay, help me this. I'm trying to get rid of grass over here in the rocks. When we have grass over there, you can throw it. Why are we throwing it this way? It'll die. No, it won't. It yeah, sprouts it up. Look at it. No, it won't. It'll die. Aiden, Mama's got a job for you. Get the grass out of the rocks. Isn't that right? It'll lay over there and die, seriously. No, it won't. I'm just going to rake it out. It's only about to come out and slaughter it like it slaughtered everything else. So what are you doing? What, what bed is this? This was our strawberry bed until I slaughtered it with some needle. Instead and of buying the spray, she bought the concentrate and she put that stuff on straight. And I still have some. Yeah, there's some right there. Some. Here. Um, and I'm, so I'm just trying to kind of like this one right here, it still roots there. Just trying to salvage it. So I'm just trying to get the, the weeds and stuff from around it. Are we going to beat the rain? No. It's raining already, isn't it? We're all trying to beat the rain. So what are you doing, AP? Hey, it's a much needed thing with all this crazy rain, huh? Mm -hmm. The chicken coop is ready to be harvested with compost. However, we can't because it's so wet. So what we're going to do is put some hay in it. Let them mix that up with all the muddy waste they've got. And then hopefully on a dry day we can get it back out and actually it'll be ready to compost. Ain't that right? Well, the rain is back. Tomatoes are done though. You can see them getting soaked. Cows are getting soaked. Camera's probably fixing to go off. So uh, we got some strawberry work done. We got some tomato work done. And we're gonna watch it rain now. We got we did get the sizes for Daddy O. We're gonna try to close this gate so the cows won't get out. But uh we hope that you've enjoyed this video today. I know it wasn't much, it was a bunch of work. But uh that's about how it is on the homestead. So uh thank you for joining us. God bless and happy homesteading, y'all.